We're talking about the figures released today under the Freedom of Information Act. €360,000 worth of booze was consumed in the Dáil Bar in the Iraq this last year. And a pint of the black stuff at Leinster House, €5.20. Heineken was the second most popular draft beer purchased. About 1,800 pints uh, consumed. And cork dry gin was the spirit of choice. About 1,600 measures sold. Uh, wine was another big seller with the own brand Arochvis wine at €6.40 per glass. But it does raise the question today, should we have a bar in Dáil Éireann, whether it's in um, for, to serve members of the uh, the Arachnus at all, whether that be in in the in the Dáil or from the Shannon. Uh, Michael Collins is an independent t- TD in County Cork. Michael, you don't agree with having a bar in the Dáil. I don't look. I've been a long term advocate, Andrea, um, in relation to the Dáil bar. Um, you know, I just the way I was felt before I got into politics, and I do take a drink myself, but I've never taken an alcoholic drink in, in the Dáil bar since I went to uh, since I was elected in 2016. The way I felt was that so many people in this country get up at six, seven, or eight o'clock in the morning. They work hard all day, and they go home. They don't have a bar to 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 walk into to socialise or whatever um, during the day. And I think it's it's your place of work and it's my place of work and that's the way I respect it. There's plenty of other places in Dublin or in its surrounds that you can have a drink. The only thing I will say, Andrea, three hundred and sixty thousand euros has been spent using an alcohol and that's the figures and that I accept that fully. But that's I won't say 99.9% but a huge percentage of that is the visitors and I will say another thing too that if I uh, gave a tour to anyone that came up from Westcock or anywhere Mm. they'd love to go to see and everybody loves to go to see your your, your own uh, doll and your own state buildings Uh, if I didn't take people into into see the bar, I'd say they never again vote for me. Oh no, you have to give them a a day out and show them around and they probably expect you'll buy them a drink or a coffee or something Michael Absolutely, yeah. they, they, they absolutely adore. And the biggest trouble is sometimes I have to leave them and go away because they want to stay there until just their little day out. And it's it's iconic and it's known all over the world. And I often see when people take them to different parts of the doll. Obviously, when you take them to the gallery, they're seeing the doll. They love that. But when you take them to the bar, their eyes open. And go, oh, this is the doll bar. Oh, we we yeah. we got here. We got here at long last. But I, and I do. I, I worry too sometimes when I when I say that there shouldn't be a doll bar in the country. I worry about the staff, and I've often said that they, them staff and their super staff and cider, they should be put into the catering because you know we do we do spend long hours in the doll. I fully accept that. You go in some morning at eight o'clock. You mightn't be out until eleven or twelve, and that's a long day. Um, it's two days and one as such. Uh, if for many, mm. and you do need food. There's no doubt we do need some kind of food out there, but alcohol, I've often questioned it, and I, I still stand over them, um, them, them doubts I have in my own mind. Yeah. So, so, so sorry, so the €360,000 that was spent in the Dáil Bar, as you say, there's nothing to suggest that that 360000 was drank solely by the uh, by the members of the Iraq. This It could, as you say, Michael, in many cases, could be TDs or ministers bringing tours or groups or whatever yeah, in, in and around but at the same point it does raise the question you know you're not full time tour guides either No absolutely and you know I don't, in fairness it is maybe in a Christmas occasion or something like that or that people who come up and it's a school we obviously don't take schools into the into the doll bar but um, uh, but when they come you get you have to give 10 15 minutes to someone and they'll always ask you could I have a look at it could I have a look at it and of course when they're in it in, they, they might like to indulge a little people that visit but um, the 360,000 that's spent is not definitely spent by uh, politicians that are well, in it's, there, no, it's, it's, it's definitely it. not we, we can categorically say today according to these figures that have been released actually tea and coffee um, actually it was tea and and if you want to be quite precise about it, it was an Americano. They were the two most popular drinks sold after Guinness in the Dáil Bar. They've actually worked out in 2003 that there were 9,803 cups of tea served uh, in the Dáil Bar, followed by 7,261 Americanos. Stay with us, Michael. Um, Shane Ross, of course, former government minister, is, is with us on the line today. Shane, should we have a Dáil Bar or should it be scrapped? Oh, we should definitely. I speak. I, I speak as one who uh, I must have been the best customer in the Doyle Bar for many, many, many years, and uh, I was there for thirty-nine years. And I and and I, I during the thirty-nine years, but certainly thirty-four of them, I never had a drink. The Do, the Doyle Bar, and as Michael has rightly say, it's got two components. One is for visitors, which is where nearly <laughs> nearly all the turnover you're talking about is, is by visitors coming up for the day, having a great time, 
having a drink afterwards. I'm not talking about them getting, getting blotter or anything like that. Uh, and then going off, it's a kind of institution where people enjoy themselves. And they go around the house, they see, they see the door on the channel, and then they go in for a drink and something to eat. And the other thing is, uh, and the members bar, which is the separate part of that word, and very, very little of that time ever takes place. I used to go in there very nearly every day. But for lunch, I'd just have a sandwich or, 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 or something like that, and a, and a cup of tea, which you're talking about, a cup of coffee. And now we get all this hubbub about saying, should we have a door bar or should we not have one? I really think uh, for the visitors, it's a necessary part of a day out. Uh, and for the members, it's, it's not as though, I, I must say, in, in recent years, when I've been there and I spent a lot of time there at lunchtime, I never saw anybody actually having a drink at lunchtime, virtually. And I, I don't remember ever seeing anybody drunk. So I'm not sure quite what the fuss is, the fuss is about. I think, you know, the visitors are entitled to their drink and, and the members are entitled to their lunch. And, and if, there's, if they have a couple of pints, in the evening as well. Are we really going to complain about that? I, 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 don't, I don't get it. Do you know, do you know yeah, what I mean? I, I, really I, I suppose it. it's, it, it's the perception of it though, Shane, really, isn't it? You know, and, 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 yeah. and you know this as somebody who's been in the opposition benches and, and you've served um, at, at Cabinet. But like, you know, it might be just optics, but optics are very important. And at a time, I suppose, in the cost of living discussion that we constantly have, you know, the, the idea that we have... Um, <laughs> You know the 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 availability of the drink in the doll bar, or you know, basically all day to members. I suppose it doesn't sit well with people. The other thing I'd say that probably antagonises people somewhat, Shane, if you don't mind me pointing yeah. out today, is the fact that the pint of Guinness in Leinster House costs five euro twenty. Now, if you were to leave Kildare Street and walk down anywhere across Dublin, you will do very very well to find a pint of Guinness for five twenty. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think that's a good point. I mean, it it, it should be maybe. Maybe at the same level as anywhere else, which is a commercial organisation. I think that's that's probably true. And, but you know, members aren't really benefiting from it because members aren't aren't drinking an awful lot, to to be honest. But it's a, it's a fair point that people should look at it with envy. But you know, t- t- okay, put the prices up so that people pay exactly the same amount. Or if, if, but why are if, they not? If, if Just want. clarify. Would, do you, or do you know that, Michael? Like, I don't know. I don't know how they. I don't know how the prices are set there. I mean, five twenty. Five twenty is. Seems to me quite a lot of money to pay for a pint, but but if they're you're a not, lot you're higher, not a pint in, yeah. you're not get a pint in Dawson Street chain for for no. uh, for five twenty. But do, do you know that, Michael? Like just to clarify for listeners, it's not that it's subsidised. Well, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm not aware of the price of the pint because I don't buy the pint uh, inside the dog bar. But um, you know, I, most places uh, that I would take a drink and it would be in the region of five something. So I'm not sure what's the, the story of the, the pricing of the drink. I've never uh, questioned that. But what I have questioned is before I got into politics, it was always, uh, you know, frowned upon in my own constituency. How in the name of God can? Uh, and I know there's a perception out there, and and and, and Shane is right. There's a uh, the wrong perception can be put out there that the politician is drinking all that drink. It's not, in fairness, but there wa- there is that perception. And I I made a solemn promise to the people. I, I said I have two brothers and own two pubs, and myself. So we, uh, you know, we we know uh, what it's like to be supported by your community to to run a pub. And the difficulties to run a pub. But um, I, I said that time I wouldn't take an alcoholic drink uh, in 2016 until this day. I haven't, and I just I can can sympathise with people being angered about it. I you know I don't make a big deal. But no, it was asked to come on today. I have no problem with that. But um, because I, I can well imagine staff above there saying, oh, "Good God Almighty, what's he doing to our, our, our jobs?" And they love their jobs, and they're great people. But there's plenty mm-hmm. of work to take doing there as well in the catering side of it. But just selling alcohol, I have a, 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 a just like to it in your place of work. If it wasn't yeah. my place of work, if there was a bar across the road and just called the Doll Bar, I have no problem people going across and having a break for themselves, having their tea, having their coffee, or maybe a pint. But um, but I, I do have an issue with it uh, being served in, in your place of work. It yeah. just doesn't sell well to the well, public out there. And it's a very concerning public at this present time. Yeah. Because a lot of people can't afford to put food, bread and butter on the table. A lot of people can't, you know, with the price of fuel increases, with everything increasing. And they're buying the pint maybe for six, seven, eight euros somewhere else. And they're saying, now that we can get it at five something, or, you know, it's not fair. It's not fair. Well, the, the, the point you made, Shane, I, I know now just you're not, you're, you're no longer, um, you're no longer in, in, in government but like the you know you, you mentioned that you would have gone into the doll bar on a regular basis but you might go in for a sandwich or just for your lunch mm. like if there's if, if, if you and many others were going in for a sandwich at lunchtime and there's what did I mention uh, 9,000 cups of tea and 7,000 cups mm. of Americano has yeah. been served you turn it into a cafe 
Yeah, well, it's, it, it's, well I, I'm not so sure that you'd have to do that. I mean, you could turn it into a cafe. Of course you can. And that's, that's what it is most of the time. It's a cafe. It's where, you know, the, it's where I did, in the members bar, I can tell you that they, people do go there in the mornings after in the mornings to have a, to have a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, but you never see anybody drinking in it. And then they go in there for lunch and you very rarely see anybody drinking at lunchtime, if at, if at all. And there are a few people in there in the evenings, but the idea that there's some kind of enormous amount of uh, But isn't that the thing? It's, you know, it's, it's people, maybe it's just the, the idea of it because it is um, yeah. it's such a foreign concept for, for many, many workplaces that you would have a, a doll bar. When you served as a minister and you, mm. you travelled across mm. the globe, I'm sure Shane, or, you know, went mm. on many, uh, mm. many trips abroad, is it common? Mm. Like, do, do other houses of parliament have pubs in them? Well, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I went into, I don't think I went into that many houses of parliament because you're kind of going away as, as a minister here, there and everywhere. I think you've got in the House of Commons, I think you've got, you know, all sorts of hospitality and suites and restaurants where they serve, serve drink as well. You know, so I think it probably, I think you probably will find it is quite common, in fact, you know. Um, but I'm not certain because I didn't look for that sort of hospitality when I was, when I, when I was abroad. You know, you could have your drink somewhere somewhere else in the evening. But I, I, I you know, it's also just, you know, you know Bertie Hearn, when he was teaching, he used to go there into the bar every morning uh, after, after the, the order of business. And he'd actually, he'd actually sit there having a cup of coffee and there'd be queues of TDs waiting mm. to talk to him. It was a very good social place. And they, yeah. they'd get their business done. They'd get their business done and they're talking to Bertie. I remember it so well. There'd be kind of queues of people waiting to talk to him. You'd do it over a cup of coffee with each one of them. And that's a very useful actual facility. There is a kind of, once alcohol is involved, people behave as though there's, there's, there's something wrong with it and that the TDs can't manage their alcohol in some way or, or the other. I take your point about it. I take your point about it being cheaper. If it's cheaper, I think that's probably... Well, uh, the, the, text text from a listener who says military barracks around the country and the guard the headquarters of bars mm-hmm. like the Doll Bar they're not packed with drinkers the most popular drink in these bars is often coffee there's bigger issues to be dealt with in the country rather than than getting hung up on the Doll Bar says this listener Frank has got in touch in Dublin he says there's also the Doll Members Restaurant where where I had the finest sponge cake that I've ever tasted says Frank. <laughs> 